We have focused uh, on the most important aspects, I think, of integration uh, and diversity. The first is labor market. People need work in order to live. Uh, people need work in order to have identity. When people work, they have self-worth. So we focus a lot of our efforts on creating those avenues to work, creating those systems and structures, creating the networks that people need to work. Like in Sweden, 80% of the jobs in Canada are not advertised. They are word of mouth. Well, how do you get to them? So we, we, we do a lot of work in that area. Uh, but we also work on issues of inclusion. Uh, you know, having work is very important, but as someone very wisely said, man does not live by bread alone. Um, and so we, we have focused a great deal on making sure that immigrants are included in the political life of the country, that they're included in the cultural, social and economic life. Uh, a huge part of our work is around civic engagement, participation in society because um, uh, social cohesion is is something that we all citizens must work on uh, and and we like to say and we work very actively on this that just as the immigrant has to change so does society it's really important for corporations and businesses who are located in a highly diverse uh, community or context or who are doing business with the globalized world uh, to be very aware of the benefits of diversity. And these benefits have been, are, are, are wide ranging, but I'll just share a few with you. First, if you have diversity in your workforce and diversity in your leadership, you will make gains in the marketplace. You will gain a larger share of the, of the marketplace. You will have access to people who think differently. They will not all be thinking the same way, group think, because they come from different perspectives and different uh, uh, realities. Uh, so it's not the same old uh, problems with the same old solutions. And I think as the world becomes more complex, uh, we need more diversity, not less. You also have the issue of access to global talent. I mean, talent is what drives the world. And there are, in, in developing countries, labor market and talent shortages are going to be the trend. It's not uh, something that's happening just today. It's going to happen more and more and more in the future. So how can you gain access to this talent? By having it right in your workplace. So talent, market, innovation, but I think most importantly, corporations don't exist just to make money. Corporations don't exist just to sell products. That's essential. But corporations are part of society. And if they reflect back to the community, the community that they are located in, it contributes enormously to social cohesion. And we should be very worried about social cohesion nowadays. There are so many things that are turning us apart. You know, everybody is on their cell phone or on their mobile. People like to live in a selfie world. We need to live in a collective world. In my experience, at least in Canada, oftentimes business leads the way because business is smart about consumers and customers and market share and shareholder value. Government in response is always saying the right thing and persuading others to do the right thing. It often doesn't do it itself. Uh, so this is a challenge I think all of us in this work have to stand up to and show a mirror to government and say, just as you persuade society and corporations to be A, B, C and D, look at yourself. Who is working for you? Where are they? What are you doing to open yourself up? Uh, to a new community. I think in Canada, there are many corporate executives who promote diversity because it relates clearly to their bottom line. Uh, the one uh, leader that I will cite, his name is Gord Nixon. He is the CEO of the Royal Bank of Canada, our largest bank. Uh, 
they have made diversity their core, a core value in their organization. Uh, and they promote diversity internally, externally, in the public, in many, many, many different ways. They have products that have been developed with a diverse marketplace. The people who work there are diverse. People in senior leadership are also more diverse than in the past. I'm not sure diversity has reached their board level yet, but again, it's a journey that they are actively embracing. We both have to change. It's a journey we are on together. And this because the numbers of immigrants to Canada are, are huge, 250,000 a year. Uh, so many people in Canada are, are of foreign-born or foreign-born heritage. And in addition, by 2031, our population growth will have declined at such a rapid age that we will need to rely 100% on immigrants for population growth. Without immigrants, our population growth will dip below minimum, which means you know, fewer workers, fewer, fewer uh, jobs, fewer products, fewer sales, all of that. So that's why we focus on those two very important aspects of integration, success at work, success in society. I, I think Sweden and Canada have a common passion, and that is hockey. And so we have a common hero, Wayne Gretzky, who's supposed to be the greatest hockey player in the world. And he always says that a good hockey player, a good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So in other words, looking ahead, being forward thinking, being deliberate, and not simply relying on the today to inform you about tomorrow, but being proactive uh, about, about the future. I think Swedes, and I'm not qualified to comment on the Swedish personality, but I've been here for a few days, and I think Swedes are reflective people, they're careful people, they're thoughtful people, very much like Canadians. I think you can only talk about a problem for so long. At some point, you've got to say, I'm going to put my toe in the water, even if it feels cold. I'm going to take some action. I'm going to do something. And if I succeed, good on me. And if I fail, at least I will have tried to do something and learned from that failure. So I would wish for the Swedish corp corporations uh, to have a very robust menu of uh, experimentation. Let's try mentoring. Let's try diversity in leadership. Let's try role models. Let's try awards. Let's try anonymous applications. There are so many ideas that they can pick up and use. But if they continue to talk about it without doing anything, it's that famous line from Shakespeare, it's full of sound and fury signifying nothing. That's Macbeth, I believe, yes. I would wish that Sweden, Stockholm, Malmo, Göteborg, that they implement diversity on board. It's a practical idea. It will change the face of leadership it will add to your social inclusion and social cohesion. It's doable. It's not complicated.